Some of the key advantages of Unity are the vast amount of features, tutorials and a lot of configuration options. New users can learn Unity quickly and are enabled to create simple or advanced games in 2D or 3D. So how can I even compare it to default? Well, maybe you are looking for some more lightweight solution. And maybe you found a great one. While this comparison focuses on a showdown of default versus Unity, you can probably notice it is generic enough to compare default with other engines like Unreal or Godot. A disclaimer here. This comparison is definitely not to tell you that default is better than the other solutions, because in fact in some areas it clearly isn't. This is to give you an overview on where a smaller and more focused on 2D mobile and web development engine could be a good alternative to consider when making your game. I started with size for a reason. Default is definitely one of the smallest engines out there and even if compared with smaller ones like Phaser, it still offers much more while being in a minuscule package. While comparing to Unity in both editor and build size, Default is a definitive winner. There is a problem with web and mobile games and it is exactly the size of the game. You might live in a country with optical fibers or any other solution giving you a stable and fast internet connection, but truth is, there are still a lot of places where internet speed is low. And this is a portion of the market you probably don't want to miss, because you know how important for player acquisition is the time between clicking on your game and starting an actual play. If your game could wave less and could be downloaded in a shorter time, you have more chances for players to choose your game and actually play it and be engaged, which is very important for mobile and web games. Default's main focus was always on this and additionally on offering user-friendly editor and a reliable engine. But those are not the only reasons Default is worth checking out. Default has a lot of good selling points, but the Default Foundation, which is now owning the Default, is not so good at marketing them, which might be one of the reasons behind its rather small popularity, but there's also a reason for this, mainly because Default's team focuses on making every single actual Default user comfortable and being always in touch with the community. The relation with default is always more intimate than with other game engines, are enchanted with its cozy charm. On the other hand, default is definitely not comparable to Unity in terms of popularity, age and amount of community support, but in its focus area can offer seamless, reliable and comfortable game development workflow by providing a suite of tools dedicated to game design, while empowering advanced developers to create solutions for more sophisticated requirements, for instance by allowing developers to edit the default render script. But enough on flattering it. Let's go to the facts. Default is a small modern game engine and editor, a plug and play solution like Unity. At the core, Default is also a 3D engine, yet it shines in 2D cross-platform game development and engine size and performance. Unity games are programmed primarily in C Sharp through Unity scripting API, while Default scripting is done in Lua with Default API. You may find opinions that Lua is faster to learn and easier to use, while C Sharp may offer more features and scalability. Both languages are widely adapted and used in game development. Lua is very different from C Sharp's in areas like types, simplicity, inheritance and paradigms used. But I don't want to focus further on the differences between them. My personal opinion is that Lua is way underrated while finding a sweet spot between convenience for users and performance of programs. The default manual provides a good introduction to Lua programming in default and references the tremendously useful book Programming in Lua which is freely available online. Unity also has a community support for other programming languages, but all official support like the JavaScript like UnityScript and Python like Boo are deprecated. Default has no official support for other languages except C++, utilizing native extensions or, an option for hackers, solely writing your game in game engine's code. Possible because the default engine is written in C++ and I know such hackers who did it. But while Lua is perfect for quick development, you might want to use a static typed language in some larger projects. Default has then an official community support for languages like TypeScript, Hacks, Rust, and C Sharp. 
There is also a possibility for visual programming in Unity using Unity Visual Scripting, a rel known as Bolt. Default has no visual programming option and surely won't have any official one, but perhaps some community one in the future, like it started in Unity. Default does not have classes nor inheritance. It includes the concept of a game object which can contain audiovisual representation, behavior and data. Operations on game objects are done with functions available in the default APIs. Furthermore, default encourages the use of messages to communicate between objects. Messages are a higher level construct than method calls and are not intended to be used as such. These differences are important and take a while to get used to. Default tries really hard to be reliable all the time and focuses on stability and backwards compatibility. New releases of default almost never break your game and if any critical bugs slip in, they are smashed very quickly. This is also great because new releases are very frequent. Each month, there is a two week of public beta and then a new release. Therefore, there are not so many spectacular changes to brag about in social media, but step by step, default becomes more packed with actually useful features and constant improvements and, most importantly, you don't need to wait ages for some bugs to be fixed. In 2022, default team grew in size and focused on improvements in 3D area too. While it is still not a main focus, you can utilize more and more 3D features in your games, which is very nice. For example, the default team is working on a PBR rendering pipeline. Default uses OpenGL shading language for shader scripting and offers some built-in shaders and rendering pipeline. Unity uses GLSL too and additionally offers Microsoft HLSL, declarative shader lab and shader graphs. Default focuses on making the solid bare bone easily adaptable for any game, while Unity is focused on high definition 3D pipelines with AAA graphics. Default also gradually introduces frustum calling for more and more visual components, which for example allows to make vampire survivor likes. The default was proven here to be a high performance engine. That said, Unity is years before default and its vast popularity is also proportional to the power of the rendering options. You can easily produce AAA games in Unity and make a jaw-dropping magic, while such things in default are either impossible for now or very hard to achieve. You must understand this difference does not come from the structure of the engines, but the amount of features. If you are targeting some visually stunning 3D titles, you shouldn't choose default for sure. But if you are by any chance limiting your scope to 2D, then in my opinion default is a better choice. Even if you are aiming for 2.5D or even basic stylized 3D, you can try default for it. And one of the best things when compared to Unity, default is totally free. You can, but don't need to pay it any donations, even when you want to release on consoles. And default now supports Nintendo Switch and soon PlayStation 2. Its source code is also not closed. It's available online. And yes, it's not truly open source, because you cannot take the engine's code and sell it as your own, but you can modify it to your game and release such game without even showing the code to anyone. The only need for donating to default is when you want the access to the source code of the console's plugins and SDK. Plus, you need to be a verified console partner, but to be honest, you might not even need it. There are many games made with default released on Switch to prove it is possible, even for small studios. Both solutions have a lot of monetization options and are competing in this domain really well. Default has an extension for supporting Unity ads even. Default additionally offers official web monetization support, while Unity has also support for this, but an official one. Web monetization is like Netflix for the internet, a subscription for internet's premium content, where your money is distributed to the content creators, like for example game developers, proportionally to your time invested in their productions. Unity is a respected, rightfully winning one in many engine battles. But because of this, the expectations are high. When you open the editor in Unity and try to make a game, even a simple one, you feel it's clunky, slow, sometimes hanging, and you quickly might run into bugs. But don't get me wrong, there are hundreds of talented people behind it, and it's a tool to make state-of-the-art masterpieces. It has to be big, because it's meant for big things. If you are an expert, you can really unleash its full potential. 
compared to default that you can download and open very quickly and it loads projects in seconds and is really smoother and faster in usage than Unity, you feel the difference. In summary, there are probably most of the games it's better to make with Unity. In the end, it's no wonder it has such a huge market share and popularity. But if you are aiming for this sweet niche, default might be better in some domains, because in its focus area it performs amazingly well. And if you are complaining about the things in Unity that you discovered are better in default in this video, then it's good to consider it. Thank you for watching.